uh, Pau on a whole, this is Kai Opua Fife with uh, the Kowani Foundation, another segment of Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. Now we're out actually at Hawaii Kai, and we're very pleased to have with us uh, a, a good friend, a, a good environmentalist, a, a good teacher. We're gonna let her talk about herself, Michelle Kapana Baird. Mahalo for being with us. Aloha. Thank you so much for being available. Thank, thank you, you for so much. Me. Yeah, thank uh, you for. Well, I understand you said you were out sailing last night, and you're back in today. And uh, I'm glad everybody's awake, and we're we're uh, out here to talk about you and uh, the things that interest you. And obviously, we're down here by the Kai, so there must be something that you're doing that has to do with that. And yeah. uh, generally, what we like to do is have you just kind of talk to our audience so they know a little bit of something about you, uh, you know, who you are, where you come from, and, and uh, you know, maybe what you studied and maybe who mentored you and got you up to where you are. And then we'll talk about, you know, the project or projects that you're working on that, you know, you hold close to your, okay. your passion, you know. Great. Well, uh, this is uh, Manalua Bay, and we're here today because uh, we have a special stewardship project. Mm -hmm that we work with the students of Kaiser High School. Okay. And our project is right out there on the reef, yeah. about 100 yards from shore. Okay. And what we do is we work on clearing invasive algae from the environment. Uh, so right now, um, there are about five different varieties of invasive algae that are taking over the reef in Mauna Loa Bay. And uh, I got interested in this because we can't always go sailing. I and, guess not. Uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> Sometimes it's a little rough. Well, Hawaiians, yeah. they knew, yeah, yeah, there's a time for sailing, Sometimes a time for planting. And, yeah. and part of the stewardship is trying to help to clear the invasives off the reef so that the reef can recover and yeah. hopefully, you know, restore the native population. I became interested in working in the environment because I was a longtime canoe paddler for Huinalu Canoe Club. And I paddled over here for several years, mm -hmm. and several of our coaches are uh, Hokulea crew members. Mm -hmm. And um, so when you paddle, you learn to give back to the sport, and you help to teach kids. Mm -hmm. And so that's my interest about working out here. This was my playground for a couple of years. Right. And um, there was a point in time where um, we saw like a dead hammerhead shark out here and the water was getting sort of polluted mm -hmm. because of the sediment running down into the ocean. And so we were wondering what's going on out here. Mm -hmm. So it looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, with my professor, Dr. Pauline Chin, mm -hmm. she introduced me to several of Dr. Isabel Abbott's grad students who had been working in botany and who had some research that they were doing right out here in the bay. Mm -hmm. And so they actually were my mentors who helped me uh, to learn to identify the invasive algae species as well as the native algae species. So Dr. Pauline Chin, she's UH Manoa, right? Is that? Yep, College right? of Education. Uh, and so is, is, did you go to school there or how did you get affiliated with well, uh, I, uh, Dr. I met, Chin? I met Dr. Uh, Chin from taking a, a Malama class that she offered. Ah. And the class focused on uh, your environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, and from that, she took us to different places on the island to meet other teachers who were doing some of the same things in water quality testing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I teach at Kaiser High School. Right. I, I teach PE and health and a Polynesian voyaging class. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, the ocean and things Hawaiian have always been my passion. So Polynesian voyaging class, they're right down here. I mean, not too far from the high school, I don't think. Huh? Oh, no, the high school is right there at the base of so, uh, Kohe a, Lepe Lepe. So maybe there's a chance you guys actually get in the water as a part of your class? Oh, yeah. My students, um, we, we always go in the water. It's mm -hmm. always uh, ocean activities. And, you know, to safeguard them, we always do like a voyaging uh, not a voyaging, but a lifeguarding unit to prepare them okay. to be safe out in the ocean, yeah. to take care of one another. And then we'll do activities out there in the ocean. 
for for me, it's it's a personal issue to take care of Mauna Loa Bay. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have an invested interest in making sure that the bay is going to be here for not just the future generations, but all of the generations to come. Mm -hmm. Were you raised around here, or did you come from someplace else because of a job? Or, but it sounds like you spent a lot of time here anyway, with canoeing and so forth. Well, earlier. actually, I come from Kaimuki. Kaimuki, okay. And um, I come from a family of nine, mm -hmm. and we've always been involved in uh, water sports. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I spent a lot of time paddling on the Alawai. Oh yeah. And, and it's okay, it's good because you learn how to have better technique yeah, so you don't yeah. fall in. And, and it's convenient. And, uh, it's right there. Yeah. And then I I left the club at the Alawai Heilani Kanu Club to come and paddle with Kui Nalu. And, mm -hmm. you know, I just never left. And even if I, even though I don't paddle or coach anymore, mm -hmm. uh, I still consider myself a Hui Nalu club member. Yeah, it's in the blood. Yeah, and so what's, what's happening is the canoe club was so... Um, willing to support us. And so every year we come down here and they allow us to use the canoes. And what we do is we paddle, we launch our canoes from the site, yeah. and then we paddle off about 100 yards from shore. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is we're clearing the invasive species out there. So um, the kids get to learn how to paddle canoe, right. cultural, healthy. Mm -hmm. We go out there, um, I teach them how to identify the native algae from mm -hmm. the invasive algae all by sight, mm -hmm. like our ancestors would have done, mm -hmm. and uh, they remove it. We make sure everybody's safe with tabbies and gloves so nobody gets stung by fireworms. And uh, You know, my whole job is if I teach them, mm -hmm. then I'm educating 30 more kids who are going to tell their friends, their families, and pretty soon that just increases exponentially and everyone in the community begins to understand the value of um, Malama Manalua and caring for their bay. You take a canoe out and they actually stand on the reef? Yeah. So they stand on the reef and so it's not something they're, they're, they can't, they're not damaging it no, by standing on um, it. It's, it's kind of like a different type of substrate. So you have sand, you have uh, rough, hard, bo hard bottom, mm -hmm. um, and we're really careful about if there's pieces of live coral out there yeah. with uh, algae native on it, we, right. we try to pick off all of the invasive and put it back so that it can continue to grow. Probably because there is no quota on harvesting in the amount that you could take home, mm -hmm. you know, it, it just... and and. You cannot only say harvesting, you know, there's also the impact from sediment flowing into the ocean. Yeah. And uh, maybe people just not knowing how to pick it right. Mm -hmm. And instead of picking or pinching off the limu like our ancestors thing. taught yeah. us how, they take off the whole root or the hold fast nothing and then yeah. there's nothing to grow back for for the future. Yeah. I know we have uh, on Kauai that we have that problem and it's over harvesting. Uh, I can remember my mother telling when she was little, they would go out, listen to this, with a piece of white bread, and they, and they would pick limo and make a limo sandwich. And, uh, That's but great. I mean, that was like, maybe it might be their lunch. That was their lunch. Uh, but when you go out and you start picking for someone other than just your lunch, you know, I mean, you're, you're kind of doing like a commercial operation or more than what you need it's hard for the hard for the environment to put it back huh? especially if you're picking it all the way down to the pull the roots off and everything else uh, so over harvesting I think we all relate to I, I always wonder you know now we know where what we're possibly the, the, the invasion technology comes from maybe from the ballast of ships and so forth. What kind of a, does that mean that if this was over harvested with a native uh, limo, do you have to propagate and try to restart it? Or are you just trying to give what's left a chance to, uh, to grow more? 
Well, right now I'm trying to go and gather stories from kupuna or mm. people in the area who knew uh, what, what occurred here in the bay maybe 40, 50 years ago. Another one shared that uh, her grandfather used to take care of a fish pond. And at another location, there would be like tons of ele ele mm -hmm. and how the waters become polluted now. Mm -hmm. So... Um, would that, would that uh, fish pond have been in the bay or inside someplace? Or? Oh, well, you, you know what's the incredible thing is that from Hawaii or Mauna Lua, mm -hmm. we like to tell them the place names, sure. all the way to Kahala, there were tons of fish ponds in the area. Mm -hmm. One of the largest fish ponds was right back there. Mm -hmm. We call it Kuapa. Mm -hmm. But um, we know it as its traditional name. Ke'ahu, Ke'hau. And so I think that a lot of development actually changed the whole ecosystem oh, out yeah. here. Yeah. And so we're, we're trying to do our part. And if we can, maybe um, we'll try to get some of the native that can grow out here mm -hmm. and see if a friend of ours can propagate it mm -hmm. and then we re we put it, uh, try to see if we can grow it out here in the bay. Yeah, get it come back. Yeah. Well, no, maybe we'll do a good job and maybe it'll help to affect the native uh, fish population out here. Maybe we might see more fish returning mm -hmm. because they don't eat the invasive. Yeah, they're not interested in that. No, and then some of the invasives release toxins into the ground. So, you know. If that's not their food source, right. they're gonna leave the bay to find a new food source. Yeah. And so other people have commented where they've seen fish out here so thick that you could walk across their backs. Yeah, I've heard stories like that, yeah. And uh, how incredible that yeah. time must have been yeah. in history. Bountiful, huh? So bountiful, yeah. so I know Momona. So the, um, I guess maybe you would call it the eradication effort that you folks are doing with the classes. Yeah. Uh, just trying to clean it up and get it at least down to where the invasives are kind of gone. What, 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 is your, what kind of impact can you have on the invasives out there with your classes? I mean, it sounds like a pretty big job. I mean, I'm trying to visualize how much they have out there to deal with. You essentially, just clean them up completely and remove it and haul it, haul it in, I guess, huh? Well, we started the project in 2003, mm -hmm. just on a real small scale, right. uh, learning to identify and seeing how long it, it would, uh, once we cleared the spot, how long it would take before it grew back. Yeah. And so uh, I have to give credit to my girlfriend, Kim Payton, mm -hmm. uh, who actually helped to mentor us mm -hmm. and teach us how to, how to work in uh, clearing the invasives from yeah. the reef. Yeah. And uh, so what we did was we try to incorporate science and culture into our program. Right. And so because scientists have a certain method of lining out Grid um, type thing, yeah. transects Transect, and yeah. quadrats, you know, right. we were able to figure out how much people it would take to clear an area, mm -hmm. uh, how much time it would take, how much people you needed, and, and uh, the correct techniques for safety as well as doing a very good job clearing the area mm -hmm. and we had kids learn to clear it the way that we learned how to clear it mm -hmm. and then once the kids started going they enjoyed it it's, it's only like an hour and a half of their time on a Saturday but on one of our clears we pulled up close to 4,000 pounds oh, yeah, of invasive yeah. algae yeah and uh, you know it doesn't become my project anymore it becomes the students of this community right. that live here yeah and they're happy to take care of their ocean. They, they, you know, they think of it as weeding the ocean. Sure. Uh, I guess on the transects, are you are you folks using uh, any kind of uh, modern technology for your transects? Like, are you shooting GPS type locations, or how do you, how do you establish your lines? You're actually putting physical transect lines down. How do you divide the areas? Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll lay down a transect and we'll map it with a GPS. Okay, yeah. And then um, the area that we cleared so far, you could see like a definite 
six foot wide like by 30 foot long yeah. cleared area. Yeah. And then uh, we know that that's the area we're gonna go to every time. Okay. And so besides using scientific method of using transects mm -hmm. and uh, marking with GPS, yeah. We also teach them how the Hawaiians would do if they came in voyaging, a high uh, point, a low yeah. point, yeah. match it up Straight where they line. need, yeah. going off certain landmarks like the yeah. uh, the boat ramp. Right. And if you take a look, we have poles out in the ocean, yeah. lining up with specific mountain points. Mm -hmm. and, and the kids, the kids will know. Cool. So if you what lost about? every single scientific method that yeah. you had, at least they'd have it. Yeah. stored in their own mind. There's a community organization called Malama Mauna Lua, yeah. and um, they were interested in clearing sites in Mauna Lua Bay, mm -hmm. specifically to remove invasive algae. Right. So what they've done is they've developed their own type of uh, matrix mm -hmm. where they collect it with the help of TNC, the okay. Nature Conservancy. Okay. And so, They've been taking the number of volunteers as well as the hours that they clear right. and collecting data so that over a period of time, they can show that this group's been clearing at least so many tons per event each time they go out there. Mm -hmm. And so we, we've been collecting the data for ourselves mm -hmm. and with the help of Kim, because she showed us the scientific methods, we can now pass on that information to TNC. Okay, then they can input it. And yeah, so, it. Um, you know, the kids not just learning about science, but mm -hmm. they're also contributing to an organization whose whole mission and goal is to protect and conserve nature. Yeah. So. Well, that's cool. I mean, there's a lot of things going on, you know, as the more you think about it, you think, oh, we're going to go out and clear some limo, you know, some invasive limo. And then you start thinking of the elements that go into doing that and the logistics of uh, you know getting them out there and making sure that they're safe that's a it's a big thing so you've got the members of the class and the school but you say you do it on saturday so you also get pub people from the general public could come in sometimes uh, we have volunteers yeah. who are willing to come with their kids yeah. uh, some of my teacher friends bring their other friends who are teachers mm -hmm. as well as you know scientists that mm -hmm. come out and help mm -hmm. kukua what kind of age do you have any age limitations on participation? Uh, you know, the DOE, they have uh, strict water policy rules okay, and regulations. Yeah. So I try to, um, since I teach PE as well, mm -hmm. uh, as well as um, health certification, a lot of my kids, I put them through the same type of requirements that you would have to fulfill that water requirement an hour of swimming. And yeah. so, you know, just to prepare the kids to be safe, yeah. as well as bringing out uh, first aid kits. With the help of Malama Manalua, um, there's like a waiver that helps to protect us. Yeah, okay, cool. And I know we do some things for the, you know, associated with DLNR properties. And so we have volunteer waivers. Yeah. But ultimately, you know, under that, there's an, actually insurance company coverage through the, uh, the state that, that actually covers people who are volunteering. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's kind of, I don't know what the limitations are, but at least there's a provision for it. So, my goodness, we're just about out of time. This is, uh, this is involved. Oh, wow, look, is that Nene? Or oh, ducks? well, we have or a lot ducks, of uh, mallards that live in the area because you know, there's water. ponds. Yeah. And uh, we have, right over there is a wildlife you see where those people are? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's called Paiko Lagoon, but it's uh, protected by National Fish and Wildlife. Oh, it's see. it's a it's a bird sanctuary. Yeah. Well, right I, back there we have a big pond, a fish pond, where people actually feed the ducks. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it feels like we should be going on for a couple hours, but we have a half hour segment, and uh, maybe we have to get together and talk again sometime. Maybe we get out on the water sometime. Yeah, that'd know? be nice. But uh, I hope, uh, hope some of the folks at home uh, find this interesting because obviously anybody living around close to the Kahakai can kind of relate to some of these situations and what you're dealing with. And who knows, maybe someone wants to start up some kind of similar thing. I know there are other projects going on around the island. But we want to thank you for sharing with us. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, it sounds like a real good, healthy thing for 
Arcusa and, and the whole community to be doing. Yeah. And appreciate you making the time to be with us. Uh, mahalo so much, Michelle. Thank and you. And we'd like to thank those of you who are tuned in for uh, participating. I, may, I think you probably learned some things. I know I did uh, from listening to this terrific project out here. So we'll ask you to tune in again because we'll have more things to come. Some of them related to the environment, some related to all kinds of different things. But once again, I'd like to say thank you very much from the Kiwani Foundation. I'm Kai Pua Five, and we're coming to you with Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future, a component of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network. Mahalo and a hui ho. Thank <music> you.